We're now going to add the border to the main body of our shawl. I'm going to use a contrasting color so it's easier for you to see against the shawl. So if you wish, you can continue with the same color from where we left off. I will join you at that point in just a minute. We're going to work first a round of single crochet around the whole shawl. So I'm just starting in my first corner with a single crochet and I'll work through the tops of each of those half double crochet that we finished last round. Now for the border, we're going to use the same size of hook that we used for the main body of the shawl. So that's your larger hook size. You want to keep the tension the same as when you worked the body. So you can work single crochet all the way across the tops of that last row of half double crochet and I'll meet you at the first corner. In my last stitch and we're going to start working along the side edge of our shawl. So if you just join me now this is where you will start working. To go around the corner, we will make a chain two to form that corner. And we have half double crochet at the end of each of these rows. So when you're working into half double crochet, you work in groups of three. So two stitches in the first half double crochet, one in the next. Two stitches in the next, one in the next. So this first half double crochet, I'm going to insert under those top loops that are to the side now of that half double crochet for placing a single crochet. And then I like to go through the two sort of post legs at the bottom of the half double crochet. So through those, but making sure I go through at the back as well. So there's actually two loops on the hook as I go through to pick up a loop and finish my single crochet. So now this next half double crochet, we'll just place one single. And then the next half double, we'll place two singles again through the top loops and then through the post legs. And one single. One and two singles and one single. So you can go ahead and work a row of single crochet across the edge and I'll meet you at the next corner. So I finished my short end part of the shawl with those single crochet, make the corner chain two and then starting to work along the side. Now this is where it's nice when you've worked the foundation half double crochet as it makes it very easy to clearly see the stitches so knowing where to insert our hook to pull up a loop at the base of each of those starting foundation half double crochet. If you worked a chain first, you should be able to see the one loop that is remaining that you didn't work into, and that's where you would insert your hook to do the single crochet. So you can continue all the way around all edges of your shawl with these single crochet, and I'll meet you back here for row one of the camel border. When you're working on your last short edge, it'll be the same idea of two single crochet in one row of half double and one in the next. The stitches will just be reversed, so the, you'll see the base posts of the stitch first before the top of the stitches. And then when you get to our starting point, we will chain two and join to our starting single crochet. You can start your new color in that corner space with a half double crochet and we'll half double crochet in each of the stitches down the side. If you're not familiar with a standing half double crochet, you can join with a slip stitch and chain two to take the place of a half double. But half double crochet in each stitch and I'll meet you at the corner. Work to those half double crochet all the way down the side and you've gotten, you've reached that first or that next corner. We will place a half double crochet in the corner space, chain two, and then ready to work down the next side, we'll add one more half double crochet in that corner to form our new corner. 
and half double crochet in each stitch down this side as well. Okay, so you can go and work that all the way around, joining to our starting half double crochet to finish this round. So at our closing corner, we need to half double crochet in that space, chain two, and then slip stitch to our starting stitch to finish this round. So row two and following of this camel stitch border, we will be working into the third back loop of those half double crochet we just made. So to start this row, we will chain two, which does not count as a stitch, and half double crochet into that corner space that we just finished making. And then we're going to work half double crochet into the back of each of these next stitches. Normally we would place our hook under those top two loops of the half double crochet, but if we fold it over, we can see one more loop on that back, that third loop, and we want to work into that back horizontal loop to pull up our stitch for a half double crochet. So the top two loops are here, it's this next third loop here that we're going to join into. So rolling over or folding over our work to see that back loop and a half double crochet. And again, if you worked loosely in the shawl, you'll want to keep these stitches loose as well so it doesn't pull or bunch as you work. So by working in that back loop, you can see how the tops of the stitches are to the front then, forming a little bit of a ridge and creates nice texture. So again, you can work down this side here. So I missed the corner stitch. We should have worked in the third loop of that very first stitch too. So I'll show you that at the next corner. Worked that back third back loop of the last stitch you will place a half double crochet in the corner space, chain two, half double crochet. And then, this is the part I didn't show you the first time, this very first stitch, there'll be a third back loop there as well. It might be slightly tighter because of the corner stitch, but we'll work into that third back loop and so on all the way around. So again, when you've worked your way around and come to that closing corner, we will place a half double crochet in that chain two, chain two, and join to our starting half double crochet to finish this round. So you can repeat row two as many times as you like to complete your camel border. When you've gone far enough, you will just fasten off and sew in your ends and enjoy. Now it's time to make some pockets to add to our feather pocket shawl. First you will want to decide how large of a pocket you would like. Uh, the designer used a pocket that was basically just for fingertips to fit a bit in. You can make it as large and as wide as your shawl if you prefer, or you could just sort of measure your hand and make it just a little bit larger than your hand width, but the choice is yours of how big of a pocket you'd like to make. So using your smaller size hook, you can go ahead and make your starting chain. And then we're going to half double crochet in these chains, but we're going to work on the back side, the back bump of the chain. So as I roll my chain over to the back, we can see this extra raised loop or bump on the back of the chain. And it's into those that we're going to work our half double crochet. So the first one's a bit hard to see. One, two, and into that third back bump is where we will start placing half double crochet. So 
So you'll just half double crochet in each back bump of the chains down the row and I'll meet you there. So that's your first row of half double crochet. Then we will chain two, which counts as your first half double crochet. In that third loop again, now this time it's on the front of our work, so our top two loops are right there. There's the third loop right there. So working from the front, not on this first half double crochet, but starting in the next one, in that third loop, which is on the front of our work now, we will make a half double crochet in each stitch down the row, working third loop. So you can go ahead and work that until the second last stitch, and I'll meet you at that point. But you can see when we flip it over then, how we have that ridge created. So I've worked all my stitches down the side. I want to make sure you work in the third loop of this second last stitch, just before the chain two, and place a half double crochet through both loops of that chain two that we turned with, and that will create a nice even edge instead of working into the half double crochet. And then you will repeat this row several times until you have the correct or the desired number of stitches. So skipping that first stitch, working into the second stitch and that third loop. Down the row. I'm placing the last half double crochet in the turning chain two. So you can go and work this till your desired width of pocket, and I'll meet you at that point. Once you have made your desired width of, po of pocket, you can fasten off, and then we want to place it on our shawl where you'd like it to sit. It's uh, helpful to have it sort of centered between both edges of your shawl and just above the border. Once you're happy with the placement, you go ahead and pin it in place, and then you can sew these edges on, of course, leaving the top edge open for use as a pocket. So now we can add a fringe on if you wish. So the first step I do is I take a piece of, I have a, a wooden sort of box lid I have, so you want something about the width of your desired fringe length. I'll wrap it many times around my shape. You can cut a piece of cardboard if you wish. You can cut these individually as well. This works well for me. And then the designer recommends, or she used three strands. You can decide how many strands you want to use in each fringe and how much you want them spaced across. So these few that I have already worked, I started the first one in the corner and I skipped a stitch in between. You can work every stitch if you wish for a fuller effect. I insert my hook through the stitch from the back to the right side. I put that folded over loop on my hook and pull through. Oops, I missed one of them. I'll try that once more. And then I take all of the loose ends and insert over my hook to pull through that loop that was on the hook and then just gently tug them tight for your fringe. Then after you have them all done, you can go through and trim off the long ends so they are all similar length. So once you have worked the desired fringe, you can make sure all your ends are sewn in and then enjoy your feathers pocket shawl.